I sort of revised this. I had done this a couple of years ago, and I wanted to show you a, a little bit more stuff about this. This is a there's a lot of these transmissions nowadays that's going to have diptychs in them because I always had the idea it was because the uh, people that are adding fluid a lot of the times don't know how critical it is to have the transmission fluid at exactly the right level. And you might also know that transmission fluid is not like motor oil. It expands and contracts a whole lot more. So you'll actually have a lot of dipsticks that will have uh, a place for a range for cold, a range for hot. And if you're not really careful, you'll wind up when it's cold to the hot. You know, of course, whenever you've got a, a transmission that's low, uh, how much fluid do you add if it's not between the, uh, give it to the bottom of the old crosshatch area? Half a quart. Half a quart is what you're going to fill on there. Okay, so if it's got, look at that dipstick really carefully. If it's got low, if, if it's got cold and hot, the engine can be warm, but the transmission still be cold. You know what I mean? So if you pull that dipstick out and you're feeling cool fluid on your fingers or whatever, if the dipstick is not hot, then you're probably going to be looking at cool. So it's, it's critical and it expands exponentially with heat, you know, to a certain thing. And that's, that's something you got to remember when you're doing all this kind of stuff. Um, so a lot of transmissions are sending pre-filled. I remember one time that when Adam Snap was uh, working at a shop over there, he put a, they got a transmission from the Ford place and he, uh, he was transactional for a Ford Windstar. He popped it in there and they drove it. Uh, after a couple of weeks, they came back and said, something's not right about this. And, uh, and he called me, he said, what should I do? I said, send to the Ford place over there because it was built by Ford and it came refilled with fluid. So just let Jimmy uh, look at it and see what he thinks because it's Ford warranty anyway. And so Jimmy, uh, I called Jimmy and said, what do you find wrong with that transmission that Adam had over? He said, they put the wrong fluid in it when they built it. And I said, how do you know? He said, I can smell it. But if you know the friction modifier, you can smell in that fluid. It had the wrong fluid in it. Well, see, the fact that Jimmy was quick enough to pick up on that by just smelling the fluid. So that's not the right fluid. It's not going to work right. He said fluid exchange and took care of the problem. And I've actually done that before too. Whenever I'd have one that you can have the, the, the chattering and stuff that goes on because when a torque converter modulates in, it's not a straight lockup every time. It's going to go, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60. First time I ever saw that was in 1989 on a uh, Eagle Summit. And it was filled with engine surge. So I'm driving it down the road and trying to figure out why it's got an engine surge. And what's so stupid about it was I actually cleaned the injectors and cleared it up. And then it came back a couple of days later and said, it's doing it again. And so the guy, when I called and talked to Dave Farley down in New Orleans with uh, Chrysler, because, you know, Chrysler and Eagle were at the same outfit at the same time. He, Chrysler bought Jeep, Jeep became Jeep Eagle and all that. Anyway, uh, he said, put uh, ATF plus four Mopar fluid in it. I didn't think I was going to touch it, but it took care of the problem. I did notice that when I put a dwell meter on the torque converter line, it wasn't just locking the torque converter straight up all the time, it would lock it up in stages, you know, percentages. Well, if it's supposed to have a controlled slip and it's supposed to be slipping smoothly, it's got friction modifier in the fluid, if that friction modifier begins to break down, well, some of these Crown Victorias, you'll feel like you're running over those little speed breakers right before you get to a stop sign. You know what I mean? It chatters like that, or you'll feel what feels like an EGR surge, and it'll be transmission fluid related. See what I mean? And uh, one time I had this vehicle that the transmission was acting crazy. It was an old uh, little LTD back when I was at the Ford place. And uh, somehow or another, the dipstick had been pulled over there and it was under the suction line on the air conditioner. And the air conditioner, had, and when I pulled the dipstick out to check the fluid, it was a bunch of water that had sweated off the suction line and went down into the transmission. <laughs> and I actually had to change the transmission fluid on that one, and that's all it took to take care of that anyway. Uh, Cost saving, you know, pre-fill, cost saving factor, not having to produce the part. I don't know. Who knows? Wayne Colonna was talking about this. He was trying to reason this thing out. It's got to be exactly right. I feel like that's probably the biggest deal. They want it exactly right because they don't want to have to over full. It's got to be level. It has to be level to get an accurate measurement of fluid level. If you're checking it on a hill, you're not going to get it. Right? The temperature of the fluid is critical. you got to have a temperature of the fluid exactly right. And there's charts for this. I'll show you in a minute. If the fluid level is low, add the correct fluid type and the correct amount of critical units. You can just pour some any kind of transmission fluid out if you be a height. That's not the way it's going to be. You're going to have to have the right kind of fluid. So make darn sure you got some literature that's going to tell you what kind of fluid to put in there. Sometimes when you look at the dipstick, you'll see on the dipstick, it'll tell you what kind of fluid to use. That doesn't happen every time. But you'll, you'll be looking at the dipstick. Put, pull, pull the dipstick out and read the darn thing. See what it says. Engine oil dipstick, transmission dipstick, 
Sometimes they don't tell you a dead gum thing. Sometimes they don't even tell you anything except they got little notches on the side. And they feel like you ought to be smart enough to know. If the fluid level is low, and the correct fluid right. So specialized tools, scan tools, special wrenches, filler you know, attachments are necessary. All right, here's an example. 2002 Chevrolet Cavalier 1440 automatic transaxle. The fluid has got to be at 104 degrees. <laughs> You're supposed to be running in park, put a pan under. Remove this plug right over right up under here. And you got this transmission filler plug. Now, if you look at this, if this filler plug, this right here is the underside of that right there. You see what I mean? See the pan right here? There's a little old bitty 185 plug right there. The engine has to be running. It's got to be a little over 100 degrees. When you pull that out there with the engine running, you know, I'm not running through the gears to make sure everything's full up. You ought to see fluid that you can touch with your screwdriver right there. If a bunch of fluid runs out of it, this is one of those, there's a filter right there. Ain't no dipstick there. Basically, you got to have it raised up in the air on a level lift, and you're checking right there. Now, if fluid runs out of there, let it run out until it quits running out. If fluid, if you can't touch the fluid with your screwdriver, you pour some in here until it runs out of there, and when it quits dripping, you're good to go. Got that? So my son, Matt, I mentioned, I may have told this story a while back, but my son, Matt, was driving a 99 Malibu before somebody T-boned him and tore it all to pieces. But anyway, he says, uh, he took it getting oil changed in it, and um, the, wherever it was he took it, they, he gets it back, and they said, and, and it's not running right, and it's got one of these transaxles in it, and I'd seen this before, and he said, this thing won't hardly, won't hardly go. And I said, and he said, this had oil change in it, when I got out of the oil change shop, that's the way it was. I said, well, the problem is they poured transmission fluid in it. I guarantee you they added transmission fluid. I said, if you'll put that thing up on four jack stands, get it nice and level, and you'll take that little plug out with the engine running and the engine and the transmission warm, see if a bunch of oil comes running out of that hole into your pan. So he did that, and about two quarts came out. And he put it back in there, and the car ran like a new car. It was just too full of fluid. And like I tell you, most of the time when a transmission is too full of fluid, it pukes it out in the vent, makes a big mess. In this particular case, what happened was, he took it back to the uh, place of the oil. He said, why did you put, put transmission fluid in my car? You know, because they didn't even take the, go to the trouble in here. A lot of times they'll say, well, too much is better than not enough. I'll just pour some in there. You know what I mean? They feel like, too. huh? Too much is worse, too. Too much is going to cause an issue. It'll Still either, problems. On mo this one, it doesn't push it out in the vent, but on most transmissions, it will. So every transmission is not going to act the same way because it's being full of, too full of transmission fluid. But it will whip it up into a foam, and it causes all kinds of other problems. Anyway, that's one of these cars that looks like this one right here. A little 3T, or a little, uh, you know, Chevy Malibu, the small ones that are in that same side right there. There's a 3T40E and a 4T40E in the torque range. All right, here's a, what kind of transmission is that? You ever seen one like that? What in the world is this all about? Is this some kind of drive belt? Yeah, Japanese. that's exactly what it is. This is Japanese. And it pushes the train, I mean, the drive belt doesn't pull it, it pushes. But the point is, that is an automatic, that's a continuous variable transmission. Okay. I hate Japanese, it's Nissan. Yeah, and uh, well, there's, they're not the only one to use that either, but uh, but uh, they got a, uh, bottom of the pen is a 19 millimeter vein plug. See that? Uh, when it's removed, located inside the fan air, an internal tube with a hex head bolt's gonna be seen in there. And so that little tube is basically like a standpipe. Have you ever, have you guys ever worked on a commode? Well, yep. All right, so what do you got in there? You got that pipe going up in there, right? Yep. What's that pipe for? P-trap, as I call it, the pipe. No, I'm not talking about the one under oh. that. <laughs> Poop pipe. I'm yeah. talking about in the tank, buddy. You got a float, right? There is a float. There's you got a float in there, the and, and where does the water go that goes down this, this little standpipe tube sticking up? Yep. All of them got that. Well, where does that water go? It goes down it goes to the bowl. down to the bowl. That's right. Well, what happens if the tank tries to get too full? It'll go down the overflow. It goes pipe. down that overflow, right? This is what this is all about. If it's fuller than that pipe, it's like a pond. You ever know how they make a pond? The same darn way. They got a pipe out there, and if that pond gets to a certain level, it runs out and goes over where the stream went anyway. See what I'm saying? That's how they do that. So, anyway, that's the way they set A lot of them are set up that way. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Okay, that's what that pipe looks like on the inside. That's the check level or overflow pipe. When the fluid level gets here, it's going to run out there, it's going to drip out. Got it? All right, so fill and check pipe can be removed. Let the location of the drain plug. If you pull that out, you're going to drain all the fluid out. You need the other end. See, you pull it out there, ready to it. All right. Now you got you put this in here. You fill and check the transmission. 
and you're going to use a charging pipe. That little screws into the level check overflow pipe area and our pump fluid into the transmission up through that pipe, you know. And it's going to fill up. Now the, the 22 out Lincoln LS is like this. It's got that little thing in the pan. See that little overflow pipe in there? Now you can screw this out and drain the <coughs> fluid, but you screw the center, there's a little plug in the middle of it. Uh, of course, actually, you'll see that in a minute because I inserted this slide here in the wrong place. But you screw a little plug out of the middle, and the engine's got to be running. It goes basically, it's going to be like when the, when the fluid's dripping out, it goes drip, 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 you know, but it's got enough fluid in it, and you put that little plug back in the middle. I'll show that in a minute. Does this look familiar to you? Yes. It does, isn't it? You worked, you worked your fanny off on this one, didn't you? This is that 2009 F-150 and the ones that are newer than that. That 6R80 transmission. You got this little plug right here. It's in a place where the dipstick used to go. Okay? You need to know this, okay? Don't you, don't you even start with me. All right, so what we got right here is, and what's right close to this? The dadgum catalytic converter. And it's pretty doggone hot. So you better put you on a glove or something. Yeah, or, well, shop rack works, but put you on a leather glove, you know, mechanics gloves. I got them leather ones that are supposed to be good for the heat. But anyway, uh, you screw this little plug right here out. You got a little dipstick thing you're going to pull off of there. See, this actually comes off of there, and you just hold this little thing like a dipstick, and it looks like this right here. Check hot island and park. But the thing about it is, in order to put fluid in there, you got to use this thing. It looks like a grease gun, but it works like a syringe that we got around here, you know. And you just push it and fluid. Yeah, you've used it before. All right, that's a 6R80. This is an 08 Pontiac G8 right here. See that funky little thing you pull out? And you got to pump the fluid in there. <laughs> I mean, it's the same kind of deal. You're having to pump, you pull a stupid little plug out where there should have been a dipstick tube. They ain't got that, you know. It makes you wonder if you, I'm going to make me a flexible dipstick tube to go down there and come up to the top maybe that will seal good. Anyway, uh, but how are you going to tell if the fluid's right? You know, it's, it's not going to be fun either. So anyway, there's a, this is just a quick look at that, you know, basically that little standpipe thing down there is going to be the same deal, I believe, okay. This is what the standpipe looks like on these uh, forwards. It's got a, it goes up in here, and you screw that middle part out and leave this in there. If you want to drain the transmission, you screw this whole thing out. And I'll tell you something else, too. A lot of the times, these little torx things right here, they got locked out and whatnot on them. Sometimes they don't want to come out of there. So anytime you're using an Allen or, a, or a, a, a Torx bit or something like that, clean that thing out really good. Bump your Torx tool up in there with a hammer. Make sure, just tap it up in there make sure it's seated really good before you start trying to take it out. Sometimes you won't get it out. But you can buy this whole piece right here, and I usually keep one on hand. Have you ever had one that, when you tried to take that Torx bit out, it came out with a whole nut, like a whole nut started to... No, not well, that will typically happen because you're going to be holding that with a wrench anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I see, I see where you're going with that, but you're going to hold out the wrench to take that out. And sometimes it's really, really hard to get that out. So have some of these on hand. Have a new one. You know, I mean, I usually keep a new one. When I was working at the dealership, sometimes whenever I couldn't count on the parts room to stock certain things that was going to shut a job down, I would buy one and put it in my toolbox. If I had to use it, I'd let them order me another one when we charge a customer out for the one that they ordered. See? But uh, occasionally you'd see something like that. Using the scan tool, you monitor the transmission fluid temperature, start it up, engine speed's got to be above 650, and proceeding with it, the fluid temperature should be between 80 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, in order for you to have the right fluid level reading right there. Go through the gears. You stop in each position, allow it to engage, put it in park. One of the easiest things to do when you're putting one back together is not put enough transmission fluid in. You better check and check and check and check and double check and recheck and recheck. Because sometimes people will think you've got enough transmission fluid in there and then somebody will drive down the road, come back, it ain't working right, and you check and it's way low. But, I mean, double check everything. I mean, and don't overfill it, but make darn sure it's full before it leaves. You may spend 30 minutes fooling with it to make sure it's full, just checking fluid levels. Up. That's like a coolant. You can't just put in a coolant, water in a coolant system. It ain't like pour water in a bucket, okay? you got to pour it in there and make sure that it's full and make sure that it burps out, make sure that the thermostat's open, make sure there's no air trapped anywhere. Make sure there's oil in the crankcase before you start a car, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> All right, drain the filler plug. Uh, how will the larger drain plug with a wrench and remove the small center fluid level indicator? And that's what I was talking about a minute ago. And this is a special tool, but you can make one of these. You know what I mean? You can get a little tool and do that. Screws in here where the center plug came out. That's where you pump it in. See this thing here? 
OC, OTC number 2359, but everybody, I mean, every parts house, you can buy one of these, and they're not all made by OTC. OTC is probably a better one because, you know, they're usually pretty good stuff. I will tell you this, though. Nothing OTC makes is guaranteed. If you buy a special socket or something from OTC and you bust it, you bought it. It's all yours. They don't guarantee nothing. And uh, now their stuff is good stuff, but they don't guarantee nothing. All right. Or they have a, you know, before. That's the Ford, I mean, the part number that you can get. If you go looking for that part number like that, you can find that. But anyway, this is where you're at, see? I drew that in paint. Didn't I do a good job? Mm -hmm. All right, so pump the fluid in until it starts running back out and then let it drain. Make sure the fluid temperature is here. When it comes out as a thin stream or a drip, it's at the correct level. Pull it out, put the little center plug in there, and make sure that you put it in each gear and make sure it engages on. I like to have it up off the floor a little bit and run it, you know, run it back there, but you can uh, do that. Now this right here uh, is a, we pull this, we put a transmission in an 07 Dodge Charger uh, several years ago, you know, two or three years ago, whatever it was. And this is how you had to check on that. I got one of, dip, one of these dipsticks. You can buy a dipstick like this from the parts store. It's made by Dorman. Dorman's got a part number for this dipstick. It's got these millimeter readings on it. When you stick that dipstick in this tube, there's a dipstick tube in there, but it says for dealer use only. You pull that out, you stick that, that dipstick's not going to go all the way down like it would if it was a regular dipstick. The bottom of it is going to go in the, the pan straight. See how that goes straight in there? It's going to touch the bottom of the pan. You're going to pull it out and you're going to read where the level is in millimeters. Got it? You familiar with that? Okay. What you got to do, you got to have it park, got to move the dipstick tube cap, service the park brake, you know, start the engine, let it run, shift it through the mode, warm it up. Two minutes, check the oil level with the engine run and push the dipstick. That's the tube 93, 36 or whatever. And it's going to protrude, protrude the way out. You know, it's not going to go all the way down. But you got this chart that you're going to find in the shop manual. And what this is basically is your transmission fluid temperature, your millimeters is going to be here. So at 170 degrees, it'll be 65 millimeters deep. Got that? Got to have the chart. If you ain't got the chart, all you know is you got some millimeters, but you don't know. So you got to know two things. You're going to learn, you can learn this by putting a dipstick in it. But you ain't going to know this unless you got a scan tool plugged into it, right? Or maybe if you shoot, your, shoot it with your temperature gun on the pan, maybe you can tell a little something. I don't know how accurate that would be because the fluid's going to be a little different temperature than that. But if it's within a range, you can get an idea. Now, one workaround that's been used by other people, an accessible speed sensor on the thing, you can, you know, sometimes you can put it in there. But you got to be really careful here. There's transmissions that have bolts that look like fill plugs, but they're band anchor bolts. If you pull a bolt out, that's not a fill plug bolt, and you hear something inside the transmission go clink. <laughs> it's not as simple as putting that, that bolt back in there. You got to tear it down. See what I'm saying? So make dad gun sure you know what you're taking out before you screw anything out of there. Now you're not going to have that if you're pulling a sensor out, but if you pull a bolt out, it's not the right bolt to be pulling out. You know, this looks like a fill or fluid fill bolt. I think I'll have a look here, and then you hear something move in there. Now it don't run no more, or you lost a bunch of gears, whatever you know. There's what, appear, there's what appears to be a fill plug on this CVT-7 just above the oil pan. That looks like a fill plug, don't it? Well, let's have a look inside and see what's there. Oh, this is where the fluid level is supposed to be up here. See that pipe? There's that pipe, and this is where that plug is. Is that plug, are you going to be able to fill that transmission up using that plug? Heck no. You're still going to be way low, ain't you? You ain't going to be able to get it any deeper than about that, put it in that big old plug. Now, you don't hurt anything taking that plug out of there. But if you take it out of there and it's full of fluid, a bunch of fluid's going to run out of there. So be aware of this. Be, be careful. Toyota's U660 E transmission has got a drain plug to check level pipe in the bottom of the pan. See, there's another one. See, they got that kind of thing. This transmission's got a designated fill plug on the year on the cover. It has the letter WS on the plug and it'll find the type of transmission. And on the, the scan tool can be used, but some of them, you know, they got this one here. It's got a manual method you can... Go to this connector right here and jump for those two terminals, and that's a special service tool that you can use for that. Like I say, you can see all the different ways you got to do this. Don't expect that you're going to just walk up to one that doesn't have a dipstick and say, hey, I'm the big cheese. I know how to make all this happen. You best go digging into your literature, man, and you find out the right way to check it, and you follow that. If you don't have the literature, you need to, do, you need to find it. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes you can go online and find it somewhere if somebody knows. But sometimes on these forums and YouTube videos, you know, you'll you'll have somebody that will tell you something that ain't quite right. 
you know, because everybody makes a mistake whenever they're saying things. Some people, if they can't find it, they try to do it, they try to wing it, and then they'll say, well, this is how you do this, because it worked for them. Be careful with that. Uh, move the shift lever back to the P position. Uh, and see, you got your, this is what on this particular vehicle we're talking about here, whatever it is, I don't even remember now. If it's lower than optimal temperature, your shift uh, indicator will be blinking. You put it in that mode, see, when you jump those two things. And it's basically going to tell you, and it's going to blink the light and let you know whenever things not quite right. So You can improvise too. Some of the mechanics out there in order to move the fluid. Uh, this, one, this one right here. Um, let's see, adapt the, this charge. They take this little pump right here and pump transmission fluid with it. You spin that thing with a drill, move transmission fluid with it. Uh, 89, 88, 89 Honda power steering pump feed similar assembly. You can do that. And this guy right here has got a whole cart set up with a pump and everything so he can pump it in. Now, a lot of times they'll have a little pressurized pump where you put a little air pressure on it and let the air pressure uh, overcome atmospheric pressure and push it in there. You know, typically what we've done around here, and I guess we could buy one of those daggum things, we use that suction gun thing. Is it messy? Is it aggravating? But when we got through with that 6R80, we had it full of fluid and it drove out and it went smooth and by the numbers, didn't it? That thing was a story in itself from start to finish. Uh, and he knocked out. Many an automatic transmission worksheet working on that, <laughs> that one truck. And, uh, and anyway. All right. Now, are you more comfortable with a no dipstick transmission than you are? Yeah, way more comfortable than I am. Yeah. Comfortable enough not to mess with it. Yeah. Go uh. so start with me. You're supposed to. You are supposed to know everything now. Okay. You can do that, right? Yeah, I mean, what do you like on the? Uh, you got the condenser in the. Yes, yeah. You got it all. You had it pulling. You had to pull air out and put some juice in it. Right, no, um, that was replacing the. Uh, uh, the dryer, dryer. We may wait on that. The dryer is not going to be here until uh, this afternoon on that. I just and, didn't see filling up with juice. Just have to drain it again. Yeah, it all depends. Okay, all right. Whatever you want me to do. Bro.